Hello, my name is Alex and in this video I would like to explore how to export objects from Archicad and import them in 3ds Max. For this video I'm going to use Archicad 23 and 3ds Max 2020 update 2. To showcase I have used an example provided by Graphisoft. You can find the link in the description. Let's get started. First, I want to make sure that I prepare Archicad for export and then I want to make sure that I prepare 3ds Max for import. So let's start with Archicad. The first thing, I'm going to open the 3D view. For that I'm going to press F5 on my keyboard. This will open up the 3D view. It's important to note that all the objects will be exported based on the 00, zero point. Now you can find the 00, zero point in Archicad by looking in the two in the floor and you'll find an X like this. This means that this is the origin of Archicad. So all objects will be exported in regards to this point. Now let's go back to the 3D view. Here it's important to note that you will only export what you see. So basically you can hide objects that you don't want to export or you can export just some objects at a later point. I'm going to open up the layer explorer by pressing Ctrl and L and let me reveal some of the objects here. Let's for instance, let's show the trees and also let's show the furniture and lights and hit OK. Now, of course, I don't want to export with all these elements here uh, because at later stage I'm going to use some different trees inside 3ds Max and also I would like to use some uh, better 3D models for furniture inside the house as well. So for that, I'm just going to press Ctrl L again and just make sure that you're hiding everything that you don't want to be exported. So for that, let's go ahead and hide the lights, the furniture, and also let's hide the trees and hit OK. Okay, so right now we're prepared to export. But before we do that, let's go back to 3ds Max and make sure that 3ds Max is ready to import them. The most important thing in 3ds Max is the unit. You gotta make sure that the units are properly set up before you import anything. So let's do that. Customize unit setup. Here on the display unit scale, I'm going to make sure that it's set in metric and in centimeters. This is not that important, but it's a good idea to have them consistent. Now let's keep, click on system unit setup. And here, this is the most important part. Make sure that one unit equals one centimeter right from the beginning. Again, make sure that you do this setting before you import anything. Also, uh, once you set up this one unit equals to one centimeters, this will remain like this from now on. What this means is that you don't have to change each and every time. Let's hit OK and OK. Now let's go back to Archicad and explore the way to export from here. In order to do, to do that, you have to be in the 3D view inside Archicad and go to File, Save As. Here you have several options on how you would like to save. You can see all the options that are available under Save As Type. You see there are plenty of them. You have uh, DXF, DWG, you have SKP for SketchUp directly, you have Collada files, so there are a lot of options that you can export that are accepted by 3ds Max. Probably the best bet would be to use Twinmotion FPX. The FPX file format is uh, a proprietary of Autodesk and is probably the best 3D file format, interchangeable file format that you can use. If you have this on, on your list, make sure to use it. Let's just go to the FPX folder and let's name it to Sample Project. And hit Save. Once you hit Save, an Export dialog will open and ask you just a couple of things. For instance, uh, how the merge option would be by materials. This is uh, best performance. You also have no merge, but I would recommend to go with by materials. Textures, and that in file. What this means, it means that once you export the FPX file, that file, the .fpx file, will also contain all the textures inside it. 
you still have a couple of options for optimization, like exclude objects smaller than 1 cm and optimize the geometry. I would recommend to uncheck both of them as I discovered that they produce more issues than they resolve. And just click OK. Now it will export it in the file and there we go, it's ready. OK, now let's go back to 3ds Max. Here we're going to do File, Import and again Import. Export FBX and let's choose Sample Project. You see it has almost 40 megabytes. Now let me also open this the Windows Explorer and show you what's going to happen. Right now you see that you only have the FBX file here without any textures information uh, for now. I'm just going to click and open. I'm going to leave everything as it is. No changes are really necessary here. And hit OK. Okay, so now it extracted every single thing, and as you can see, I have the 3D model pretty much similar to the way it looked in ArchiCAD. Now, if I go to the File Explorer again, you see that I have a folder now, 3ds Max has created a folder for us, which contains all the textures used. As you can see, all the textures that I were using in ArchiCAD, I still have them inside this folder. Now, this extraction will only happen once I import them, so 3ds Max does this extraction. Okay. Now, let's explore the scene. Let's see if everything is okay. There are a couple of things that you need to explore to make sure that uh, everything is exported properly. The first thing would be to check the scale. Now, I'm just going to select the house, the walls of the house. And with them selected, I'm going to go to the Utilities tab and hit on Measure. Here, it's going to show me the dimensions of the bounding box. This means the... the box that perfectly surrounds this object. So it has a height of 760 centimeters. That looks okay, so I think the scale is correct at this point. Okay, let's explore something else. Let's explore how uh, the how 3ds Max has imported these files. In order to do that, I'm going to open up the Scene Explorer. So right now, I'm actually just interested in how it's named the object. You see, it has a consistent naming, and all the names are actually names of materials. You see that everything is separated based on materials. This is very easy, because right now, I'm just going to replace all the materials in the scene, and that's pretty much it. So that's actually a good idea. Okay, so now we know the scale. We know how the objects are named, so they are properly named. Now let's go ahead and check the materials as well. And I'm going to use this button called Get Material and explore the scene materials. You see I have Brick Red, which is a standard material, Ceramic Porcelain, which is a standard material, and so on. So as you can see, each material belongs to one object. So Brick Red, Brick Red, Ceramic Porcelain, Ceramic Porcelain, and so on. So ideally, uh, FBX would be probably the best option you have. Now for older versions of ArchiCAD, this won't be available. So let's see how we can approach if we don't have uh, FPX file format available in ArchiCAD. I'm just going to delete everything for now. Let's go back to ArchiCAD. Let's see another option. So again, File, Save As, and I already created a folder called 3DS. So the second best option would be to export it as 3DS. Now, 3DS, when I click Save, it has several options here. Construct the 3D Studio objects according to ArchiCAD objects, element types, layers, and surfaces. It, it doesn't really matter what option you choose here, but it's really important to set the drawing unit to 1000 millimeters. This is really a really important step. If you don't do this, then objects will be very, very small in 3ds Max, and you're going to have a lot of issues after that. Also, there are a couple of options at the lower part, like write out ArchiCAD texture information. If this is checked, this means that it will extract all the textures and put them in the same folder where you want to save this. Also, I would recommend you to check object equals group name, uh, because otherwise all the objects will be just named 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So this is ideal, just to make sure that all the names are properly uh, done. Okay, so now let's go in. 3ds Max and see exactly how what's happening inside 3ds Max. So let's start with the ArchiCAD Object Native Output. I already exported them, so I'm just going to do File, Import, Import. We're going back to 
GPS file format. And you see all of the exports here. I'm going to also show in Windows Explorer what's happening. So as you can see in, in, uh, in the file explorer, all the textures are here. So it exported all the textures because I checked this option, write out Archicad texture information. Okay, so now let's see the first one. So Archicad objects native output. I'm just going to import that one, native output, hit open, hit OK. And uh, 3ds uh, file format also supports animation. I would always suggest to hit no because it will just mess up the timeline. It's already important, but okay. So now it's reading the file, and what you'll notice as the 3d the 3ds file also contains the sun and the camera. I'm just going to select them and delete. Also select the camera and delete. I'm going to press Z on the keyboard to focus on the objects. So let's check the scale first. As you can see I have a lot of objects here, so I'm just going to pick just two objects and measure. So the scale is correct. That's only because I set the drawing unit to 1000 millimeters. So the, the, the scale is correct. Let's check the names. See how many objects we have. So pretty much every single object that was in ARCHICAD is now an independent object in 3ds Max. Like all these, these are all separate objects. Now this, this is going to prevent me from working. I mean, this can cause a lot of issues. It's not really a good idea to work like this. Let's also check the materials. I'm just going to open up the material editor and hit get material. And as you can see, we have so many materials. So this is really not a good solution. This is not something that's going to uh, make my life easier. So let's explore another option. I'm just going to select everything, hit Ctrl A. I have 2000, almost 2400 objects. And I'm going to hit delete. Now let's try another option, file import. Hit OK, and here we are. Again, I have the sun. So as you can see in 3ds Max, you always have the sun and camera. The scale should also be correct. There are a couple of issues with it, but we'll solve them in a moment. Now, let's check the names. You can see all the names are pretty much correct. We have a lot of lights, but right now, everything has been exported based on the surface. So for instance, this is Stucco, right? So this is, this, is, uh, this is a lot easier to work with. If I open up the material and hit get material, you can see that now I have really a limited amount of materials. So this would be a good option to go with. This was actually the last one, the surface. So this is this is surfaces. This is probably the best way to go. I would always recommend to go in this direction. This means that it will separate the objects inside 3ds Max based on the material they have. Now this is really important to keep in mind. So if you're going to work with this option, and I would really recommend to go with this option, you have to make some tricks inside Archicad in order to get everything to work correctly. Okay, now we have everything here in place. We have, uh, as, you, as you probably noticed, uh, we have objects and we also have lights. As you can see, Archicad 3ds file format also exported the lights for us. This is probably a good idea in some cases, but you'll probably end up with uh, uh, just replacing them and, you know, do it from scratch. If you plan to use V-Ray or Corona, this will probably be the case. All right, so now let's have a look of on a couple of problems that might occur during the export. First of all, you're probably noticing that we don't have the textures. We made sure in the Archicad exported dialog that I want to use write out Archicad texture information. But inside 3ds Max, I don't really see anything. So let's try to solve this issue. For that, I'm going to go to File, Reference, and Asset Tracking toggle. This window will show all the textures that I'm using. If you don't see any other texture, just make sure that you refresh. As you can see, all of them have a status file missing. So let's fix that. I know that all of them are in the same folder, so I'm just going to select the first one, hold shift and select the last one, and right click, and then I'm going to choose set path. Browse, and yes, this is the path that I want to use. Use path, okay. Give it a moment. And now all the status of all textures is okay. Let's close this 
and obviously all the vectors are now being displayed in the viewport. Now this is one issue that might, issue that might occur. Another issue is dark surfaces like this. You probably notice in some cases that some objects appear really dark, just you know when, when you orbit around them. This is an issue with smoothing. Uh, this is something that uh, you know it's a really old problem, but it's really easy to fix them. So I just selected these objects that I know that have a smoothing issue, and with them selected, I'm going to go to the command panel on the modify tab and just apply a smooth modifier on top. And now it looks okay, but in some cases where we have really curved areas, I just want to make sure that auto smooth, auto smooth is checked. So this is how to solve this. Okay, uh, another typical issue is converting everything to a specific rendering engine. If you plan to use V-Ray, for instance, it's not a really good idea to use all the, all the materials as standard. The same goes for Corona or for any other renderer. So ideally it would be to convert all these materials into a V-Ray type of material or a Corona type of material. It's a lot of manual work, so I'm just going to do it automatically. So I'm going to use V-Ray for this, but the same goes for Corona. I first want to make sure that the render is set to V-Ray. And then I'm just going to press X on the viewport and start typing V-Ray. And I have an option called V-Ray Scene Converter. Here, I just want to make sure that turn on trace reflections when converting standard material is checked. This is a really important step. If you don't check this, then any of the materials are converted, they won't reflect. So it's really important to do this. And also, I just want to make sure that convert standard material past to very material refraction is also checked. So I'm going to replace opacity in the standard material with refraction in the very material and just hit convert. Okay, and now you don't really see any difference, but what has happened is all the materials right now are very MTL. They kept all their properties, all their maps, and everything. So right now every single thing is very MTL, and this is a really good idea because it's going to help you a lot. Okay, so this is pretty much what you need to do in 3ds Max. From here on, you just need to add lights and find your materials, and of course render. Now let's go back to Articap. Now we notice that we separated everything into based on materials. So this means that if you decide to go with this flow to use Archicad for drafting and 3ds Max for rendering, then I would suggest not to pay so much attention on how things look in Archicad, but actually try to pay attention on how the objects are separated based on the materials. Let me give you an example. Let me go back to 3ds Max and I'm just going to select the walls and hit Alt Q to go into isolation mode. You see that these objects are based, are break based on material. Now, I don't really have an issue with this, but let me choose, choose something else. For instance, this metal part. You see that all parts that are metal are not part of one single object inside 3ds Max. Of course, you can always go and uh, in the Modify tab, select Element, and just select the, the parts that you want to detach and just hit Detach. You can always do that. But ideally, it would be to keep this in mind, and whenever you're working in Archicad, just make sure that you separate objects based on this material. If you keep this in mind, then you know it will be a lot easier. That's pretty much it. Thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, just post them in the comments, and I'll try to answer as soon as possible. Bye.